part of getting to the bottom of our emotional state so that we can feel out our suppressed emotions, grow in love, and develop a relationship with the Creator, we need to be honest about ourselves and our behavior. Okay? Now, in a previous video, I talked about challenging some society's so-called mundane norms. But those are more like societal, structural behaviors, okay? Whereas in this video, I feel that it's important to talk about individuals' culturally accepted aggressions, okay? Some people may call them microaggressions, you know, and microaggressions are definitely a thing, but I feel there's actually overt aggressive behavior that is worthwhile to investigate and ask ourselves, why do we act this way, right? I had an experience where I was walking around downtown the other day and I ran into a person that I had worked with on two political campaigns. So like obviously we have a lot of shared beliefs and some shared visions about how we would like to see the world change and we both show up and want to do the work of like you know putting forth the effort of actually um, creating a new reality, all right? Well, this person just called me an asshole. Why? Well, when I confronted him about it later, he said that he was just joking and that he didn't mean it and that he didn't think I was an asshole, okay? Is that true? Well, let's dive into some of this stuff here because I don't think it's true, okay? I think he does think I'm an asshole. As we've talked about in previous videos, I don't believe in accidents. <clears throat> because if you believe in accidents, you're not taking responsibility for all of your own behavior. And that is part of engaging the Creator's laws about this place, okay? That we take responsibility for everything that happens to us. We are humble, which means we have a passionate desire to accept and own and feel all of our own emotions, as well as accept the Creator's truth of what is loving behavior, okay? Humility plus truth equals God's love. When we are humble and when we are living in truth, we have the ability to receive an energetic substance from God, a soul-based substance that is unlike any other feeling. It is awesome. It's the best feeling there is, okay? I could, I could keep going and use words to attempt to describe it, but it's just a waste of time, okay? Let's go through some of this stuff. <clears throat> if there are no accidents, that means that you believe what you say, okay? So, like, this person really does believe I'm an asshole, because if he didn't believe it, why would he say it, right? If we're living in truth all the time, that means we're speaking truth, okay? Now... I come from, or rather, I was born in the mid-Atlantic region of the country, okay, specifically Philadelphia. Well, for any people that have ever been to Philadelphia, you may notice that it's a pretty aggressive place, okay? It's actually part of the regional identity, you know? Like, hey, we're from Philly, we're a tough town, you know, you don't mess with us, okay? you don't take any stuff, okay? Totally common where, you know, we treat our friends and those that we love terribly. We call each other names, we hit each other, and, and like we say these are loving behaviors, right? We justify this away. Oh, that's just, that's how I show love, okay? Really? Maybe you have a false belief in your soul about what love really is because you were not treated in a loving way. And so you change your views and beliefs about what loving behavior is in order to avoid confronting the fact that you were not loved by your parents as the creator would love you, okay? So then we take those beliefs out in the world and we start treating people in non-loving ways thinking it is loving, okay? How about Freudian slips? That's, that's the, the concept of like you, you slip up when you say something and you didn't mean it, you actually meant something else, right? Like, um, 
know, let's say, uh, you know, let's say you're with a partner. Okay, let's say you're a man dating a woman. Okay, and you say, hey, you know, your friend's hot. That means you want to sleep with her. You have sexual attraction towards that person. That's what that means. Okay. Now, we may explain that behavior away and say, no, 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 I'm just appreciating the beauty of a person. Well, we've talked about what sexual attraction is in a previous video, and I'll talk more about that in the future, okay? But if you're being honest with yourself, you would say, yeah, you know, I do want to have sex with her. But we don't say that because of fear of how your partner may react, right? Maybe she dumps you, and now you're alone, and you've got to feel that out, right? The Freudian slips are your emotional roadmap, okay? So if you make a Freudian slip, okay, let's take something a little bit more um, innocuous, okay? Let's say you go to a, let's say you go to a smoothie bar, right? And you think you want the pineapple smoothie. But when you get up to the counter, you order the grapefruit smoothie. And you say, whoa, 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 whoa that's, that's not what I wanted. I meant to say the pineapple smoothie. No, you actually want the grapefruit smoothie. If you're honest with yourself, you will acknowledge that that vocalization would not even come out of you if you didn't really want it. Remember, what is our physical body? It is a condensation of energy from our spirit body which is a condensation of energy from our soul, okay? There's no accidents. Even the small stuff tells you something about your emotional state, okay? How about sarcasm? A lot of people love sarcasm, okay? Sarcasm is actually an attack on the mental plane it's an aggression, it's an aggressive behavior. Okay. You're actually insulting someone's intelligence when you do that. And you're not being truthful with them, right? So like very common with like, you know, how this place is run. We feel powerless. And so we engage in sarcasm because it's really an attack, and that makes us feel like we're in control and we have power. Okay? You may be watching this video and be like, oh yeah, this guy knows everything, right? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know everything. I never claim to know everything. But I am always sincere about how I feel, even if it's non-loving. That means that if I really know something and I'm sincere, I never mess up. You know, I commented before that most of these videos I, I do in one take. Some of them, not the case, okay? But if I can do it in one take, that shows I know the material, right? If it takes me a long time and multiple takes to complete a video, I keep stumbling over my words, that means I don't really know what I'm talking about. Okay? No accidents. How about constant and compulsive lying? Folks, we live in the age of the lie. Okay? You've been lied to about almost everything. Me too. And everybody else, right? Like, your parents pass on their lies to you because they were lied to by their parents. How about political figures? They will get on national TV and lie. And anyone that is not wrapped up in the cult of personality of a particular candidate can easily 
use the internet as a tool to determine if they're lying or not. But we don't want to investigate that because we don't want to feel like we've been lied to. We would rather lie to ourselves that we're not being lied to. Mm -hmm. How about, how about, do you really even know who your earth parents are? You know, we're going to talk about recovering memories in a future video, but real quick, I want to just show and demonstrate that like when you feel out your emotions, you, you actually, you actually feel and intellectually understand the emotions after you let them out. Okay. So like one example for me is that I feel like I don't know where I came from. Well, it turns out that my earth mother was intimate with more than one man near the time of my conception. Mm -hmm. And the person whom I was told was my father was not. That means that every second of my entire life, my mother's been lying to me. Because she does not want to feel her own emotions about having intimate relations with more than one man near the time of my conception. Now, maybe she's making judgments about that behavior, or she's worried about how other people are going to react. Right? Or worry about how I'm going to react. Maybe, maybe I can't handle it, right? Let's steal my free will. It's not her choice to make if I can handle the truth or not. Okay? You think this doesn't take a toll on a person when they've been lied to every second of their entire life? Today is September 4th. We're seven days away from 9-11. Does anyone actually believe the official story about what happened? Hmm? Never forget, right? Never forget that three buildings went down in New York despite only two planes hitting them. Okay, well, Let's say you start investigating this, okay? Who actually said it? Going back to my example of the smoothie, okay? Let's say you're, let's say you correct yourself and you actually allow yourself to order the grapefruit smoothie and you're consuming it and you're feeling like, you know what? I should have got the pineapple smoothie. That would have been a lot better. Who said that then? Because maybe you might be overcloaked by a spirit person who is hooking into you and feeding their will and their desire through you in order to share in a physical experience that they no longer have available to them because they're a spirit. This is a wild one, right? Because if you allow yourself to conceptualize and consider that there are invisible entities manipulating your behavior it is going to make you angry. And it's going to freak you out. And we don't want to feel that. We don't want to, we don't want to freak out. Right? How about firearms and weapons? Okay. Now, on a large scale, the United States of America spends the most amount of its disposable income on developing weapons and tools of destruction. Okay? So-called defense budget. Now, if our government spends the most amount of energy in developing tools of destruction, then that shows that that is what they care about the most. Okay? And you know, firearms is a huge industry in the United States. The United States loves their guns and they export guns. 
What, what is a firearm? It is a tool designed to end someone's life. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a gun. You can use your own free will to do that, okay? But if you have a gun, that means you're prepared to use it, which means you're prepared to end a life, which means you believe that violence in certain circumstances is okay, justified, right? Well, did Yeshua believe that? Are you a Christian person that follows the teachings of Christ? He honored the violent free will of the people around him. It's actually a high level spiritual teaching is to not interfere with, other, with another being's free will, even if it involves your own physical destruction. And you might say like, hey, that's crazy. Why am I just going to let someone kill me? Well, if you really knew the truth about the spirit world, you would have no fear about what comes next because from the creator's perspective, there is no death. So not only on a government scale do we care about violence and destruction, but we also care about it on an individual level too, right? Why do people engage in combat sports? Why do people play football? It's all brutal brutal behavior, culturally accepted aggression. Supposedly, you teach your children not to hit people, right? But then you watch a brutal and violent game where we reward when people destroy other people's physical bodies. Is that loving behavior? If you find yourself engaging in like aggressive language with people, take note of it, okay? Be honest with yourself, right? Like if you, if you love making fun of your friends, are you really friends with them? Or do you get enjoyment out of belittling another person? And that's why you have a relationship. That's codependent addiction. Okay. When I grew up in Philadelphia, the group of friends that I hung out with, there's one guy in the group that everyone loved to make fun of. And yeah, I mean, like, for good reason. He was a mess, you know. But we all failed to recognize that, like, his home situation was an absolute mess. Okay. But no, laugh at the fool. Ha ha ha. He's our clown. He's our joker. Now, I myself did not consider myself this, this guy's friend. But at the same time, I found no desire to make fun of him. I was just honest with myself about, you know what? I'm not really interested in like having a relationship with this guy. So, you know, it may be beneficial to question your motivations about why you're acting in a certain behavior, right? But it, it, again, it all starts with being honest with yourself. Okay. Now let's say, you know, you're a person that goes around projecting ag aggression at other people and you think that's loving behavior. Okay. How do you change it? How do you, you know, how do you alter your behavior? Do you force yourself to not say those things? I don't feel that's the case, right? Because if you really want to say, Hey asshole, you should say it. Or be honest that you feel it because you really do think that person's an asshole. How to change is we change through our soul, okay? By having emotional experiences, emotional experiences changes the construction of our soul, okay? So, here are the progression of emotions and how they layer in our soul, okay? So, we know that we have intense sadness or grief that is covered by fear, which is covered by addiction. When our addictions are not met, we feel rage, right? So if we're, aggression, if we're experiencing aggression, demonstrating aggression, we're here, okay? Which means we need to 
challenge our addictions about what is or isn't loving behavior. And then that will lead to us feeling our fear, okay? You start feeling your fear, and you're able to touch your grief in certain areas, you will no longer feel the desire to say aggressive things to the people that you really care about in your life. This builds loving behavior, okay? Because our views of love are way off, okay? Way, way off, right? Again, this channel is about growing in love and developing a relationship with the creator being, okay? So, if, if you wanna do that, this is one aspect that you can use self-observation and find out where you fall on the scale, okay? Because I can tell you from my own personal experience, I, I, used to, I used to engage in much of the behavior that I've just talked about. And I can say, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that when I have changed my beliefs about love, I speak the truth to my friends, and sometimes that can be confronting, but also it's more sincere and more loving, and they feel that, okay? And now, I frequently say to my friends, I love you, because I do love them. And I tell them the truth. And I demonstrate kindness and compassion and attentiveness and loving behavior towards them. And they, in return, do the same towards me. And that makes for like a much better existence. And a much more fun existence too, because if you're engaged in loving behavior with someone, you have the potential to have way more fun, okay? And again, why is it important to feel this stuff out? Not only are you developing a relationship with the creator, but you are giving yourself the ability to feel more joy, right? More love, more pleasure, more bliss, right? More of the positive emotions that you rarely experience because you've got all this suppressed emotion inside of us, okay? So, this may this may be different depending on which part of the country that you're in, but think about which region of the country you're in and which cultural accepted aggressions you engage in and the people in your network engage in. And when you start addressing your own aggressions, then you can start telling the truth about other people's aggressions, right? And then you may be able to actually recognize, hey, you know what? This person whom I thought loved me is actually treating me pretty poorly. And you know what, if I'm loving myself, I'm gonna defend truth and tell them that and not accept that behavior, you know? If this person wants to call me an asshole, well guess what, we're not gonna to work together anymore. I'm not gonna help you or aid you in any way if you are in rage and you're projecting anger at me. So I encourage everyone, of course, to not believe me, do not Trust me. Do not take my word for it. Experiment with yourself. And of course, in every situation, if you are humble and quiet and sincere, you have the ability to ask the Creator His opinion on any particular topic, including this one. Love and peace, friends. Good luck.